good morning always Ben Gates here um, a lot of you may know me obviously I'm uh, Rob Gates Gates's younger brother now Rob and I have been chatting recently about me getting a little bit more involved on Forge from Iron um, especially in relation to the youth teams now for anyone that knows me um, on our West Ham WhatsApp groups it's something I've always taken a real keen interest in, you know. There's nothing better than watching some young talent breaking into the first team. And obviously, they'd come from either the under-18s or under-21s, under-23s. Obviously, Rice has been our most recent hit. And I think it's fair to say he probably wasn't the, the number one star in the youth setup. You know, there were players maybe higher rated than him Reese Oxford springs to mind and maybe a few others but you know it goes to show you never can tell it's about the attitude of the players but Rob asked if I'd like to do a little bit more on Forged um, in relation to the youth set up at the moment um, which generally is doing well I'll come on to that in a minute but um, yeah I was really glad that he asked and really glad to, to get involved because it's something I'm very passionate about um, so a little bit like the news, <laughs> uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to finish with the real positive, but I'll start with maybe the not so positive uh, with the under 23s, albeit I think in some games they, they classify as under 21s, but I'm going to start off with them who unfortunately find themselves rooted to bottom of the league um, on one point. After, you know, a fair few games played, it's fair to say. Um, now, the under-21 setup is managed by Mark Robson, former player, and his assistant manager is Steve Potts. Um, before I go on to sort of a recap on the season up to now, a few of the key players playing for the under-21s at the moment. Um, uh, Divin Mubama who's, uh, you know, only a 17-year-old striker. Now, it's fair to say, I think, what has happened um, in their under-21 setup uh, is that there's been quite a high turnover of players that have left uh, the team, essentially. So it's a fairly new team. Like last season, we had a really strong season. We are you know, getting some real good results. But we had some older players in that age group you're talking early 20s you know 20 early 20s 19 and a lot of those players have actually now gone out on loan um i don't think it's any secret that let's be honest the youth team you want them to win any team wants to win but that's not their primary focus the primary focus is nurturing talent to break into that first team and generally, you know, a lot of players go and cut their craft out on loan. So last season, we had players like Meepo Odebeko, Armstrong Ockerflex, Manny Longello, Dan Chesters, Adji Alesse, Sonny Perkins, who's unfortunately left us and gone to Leeds, um, and Jamal Baptiste, who, you know, I'll come on, I'll come on to talk about those guys and where they are. But that's seven players out of that team that are no longer with us. So we've had to um, promote players from that under-18s who still could be playing for your under-18s, but we're bringing them up. So, for example, Divin Mabama, England youth striker. Um, Harrison Ashby is another key player. I've got to be honest, I think he's too good to be playing reserve slash under 23 football obviously he played a few games in the first team last season and I think he's been unfortunate with injury this season because I think he would have you know he started our first Europa game and he would have been playing in the Europa games in my opinion if he hadn't been injured I'm, I'm doing this um, recording on the morning of the Anderlecht game at home which I'm hoping because I know he's back fit he's played the last two reserve team games he will at least be in the squad in my opinion, he should be in the starting 11. I'd stick with the uh, wing-back formation, Ben Johnson in the middle, and I'd give Ashby the nod on right wing-back, because in my opinion, that he's more comfortable there than Kufau. Kufau is a solid right-back, 
Uh, whereas I think Ashby really suits the wing back position. He's quick. He's got a good cross, and he, he gets a lot of assists and goals. He's you know he's a really good threat. So you know he's a key player. Freddie Potts again. He's only nineteen. He's a very highly rated uh, young central midfielder. The name will ring a bell. Obviously, it's Steve Potts' son. So I know he's very highly rated in the youth setup, and by some, he is our most highly rated youngster who may break into the first team squad in the near future. We've then got uh, another key player in the under twenty ones is Regan Clayton. I think he's only eighteen, left back. Highly rated, um, has trained with a first team squad. Uh, George Earthy, 18 years old, attacking midfielder who can nick a goal. Um, Oliver Skulls, who I think is only 16 or 17, travelled with the squad, first team squad, to Anderlecht away. And one that is really unfortunate for me, who I just don't know what's happened to this player, if anyone's got any knowledge of what's going on is Jamal Baptiste. Now, obviously, people remember, Baptiste actually started a few games for us over the last couple of seasons. From memory, I think he started a game in the League Cup. Um, he's definitely started the last game of the Europa League when we'd qualified and looked assured. I mean, he was only 18, sent half, physically looks the part at that age, quick, has capped in England under-18s at numerous age groups. He's disappeared. You know, uh, you thought he might be one of the ones that went out on loan with the rest of the uh, the young cohort. He didn't. And then he hasn't been playing, but I haven't heard that he's injured. So uh, I'm concerned that he might have gone um, a little bit by the wayside, but hopefully not. Fingers crossed, because I, I think there's a good player there, potentially. So let's just quickly recap. Uh, obviously, it's my, my first session of going through the... the youth teams so I'm going to do a round robin of the games so far not too much detail and then in the future I'll just give an update week by week on the game the scorers star players etc so unfortunately the um, the under 21s kicked off the season away to Fulham we lost 3-1 in that game Mipo Odebeko got our goal before he'd uh, gone out on loan we then went to uh, we then hosted Arsenal at home. Unfortunately, we we lost three two on that game with our scorers being Mipo and Kamarai Simon Swire. We then was away at Leicester. We lost three one there. Pierre Equa getting the goal for us. Um, we then went to Man City, who um, we unfortunately lost four one against. Uh, Pierre Equa getting our goal again, central midfielder that we got from Chelsea. We then got our first point of the season, which today is our only point of the season, which was away at Man United. So that was one all. Again, Camarai Simon Swire, who is like a winger, uh, he he got the goal. Interestingly, uh, that was when I go on to the under 18s. That was the first game, I believe, that Callum Marshall started for the under twenty uh, for the reserve team. Um, so he's seventeen-year-old Irish striker who, quite frankly, had started the under eighteen season on fire, even in pre-season, getting three, four goals a game. Started off the season in the under eighteens on fire, and I think it was just thought that look, this guy's ready to take the step up already. So he started against uh, Man United. Man United for the uh, reserve team. We then uh, hosted Crystal Palace at home. Unfortunately, we had a man sent off after about 50 minutes. Levi Lang sent half. Um, and we lost 1-0 to Palace in that game. Palace, who are top of the table in the reserve league, Premier League 2. We then hosted Chelsea at home, which we, we kind of know Chelsea are always going to have decent youth teams and setups. And unfortunately, we lost that game 1-0 as well. So you can see, you know, we've not really been blown away other than against Man City 4-1. Generally, we've been beaten by one goal, but 
that's all that matters. We, we, we're we not getting the points on board. We're not scoring many, it would seem, and we're not keeping any clean sheets. So that's a real recipe for disaster for the for the reserve team there. I did actually have a look at the, the stats in the Chelsea game, the last game we played, and the stats, other than the score, which, let's be honest, is the only stat that really matters, uh, the stats looked good. 58% possession, 16 shots, 6 on target, 525 passes against Chelsea's 388, so we outpassed them, but we're just not scoring goals. I don't know, I haven't been to see them in the flesh, um, and like I say, I think, unfortunately, we've lost three quarters of the team from last season. You know, uh, for example, Sonny Perkins went to Leeds. We lost him. That's really unfortunate. Uh, Divin Obama stepped up in his place. Adji Alessi, centre-half and captain, has gone to Sunderland on a permanent transfer. And apparently has been doing well. And then the rest of the lads um, have generally gone out on loan to League One or Championship teams. Or League Two in some cases, and I'll do a separate session on how those loan players are doing. Um, but yeah, we've we've had to promote younger players at that level, but they've got to start to to start performing and getting results. Otherwise, you know, we look like we're going to get relegated unless we turn it round really quickly. So that is, I've started off with the negative. <laughs> Unfortunately, we sit rooted to the bottom of the league. I'll now move on to the under-18s, which paints a much more positive complexion on things. You know, people might hear that. We're bottom of the league, you know, in the reserves. What's going on with our youth? Shut up, doom and gloom. But actually, I don't think anything could be further from the truth because, adversely, we sit top of the league in um, the under-18 league and... We've won every game. We're five out of five. Uh, we won. Um, we've also won in the Premier League Cup. Uh, so just interestingly enough, the under-18s last season finished second. Very unlucky to not win their league. I think they'd, they had a bit of a shaky start. They might have lost a couple of games, two or three games towards the beginning of the season. And then they went on a run that was unbelievable, you know. I think they might have I think they might have won like ten games in a row towards the end of the season. But unfortunately, uh, they just Southampton, who were top of the league, they didn't lose either, you know. So we were playing catch up from beginning of the season and we couldn't we couldn't keep up with Southampton. We couldn't overturn them, which was really unfortunate because uh, the youth team done amazingly well. Um now, we've started this season. So, last season, Southampton come top, we come second, Crystal Palace come third. And it was really quite tight between all three. All three teams are really, really strong. So, what was really interesting, first game of this, first two games of this season, was we had Palace first game, and we had South, who finished third, and Southampton, who finished top. How would we get on? Well, we... Well, I'll tell you exactly how we got on. First game of the season, away at Palace, we win 3-2. Callum Marshall gets a hat-trick. So, 17-year-old Irish striker, bought last season and hit the ground absolutely running. So much so that, as I mentioned earlier, he's now not with the under eighteens. He's with the he's graduated to the reserve team, uh, under-21s, under-23s. So, started off away at Palace, 3-2, Marshall hat-trick. Second game... We blew Southampton away 4-1. Um, won the league last season. What a result. And that was um, Callum Marshall again got a goal. Lewis Orford, who, by all accounts, is a very, very talented midfield player. And Gideon Kodua uh, nicked a goal, as well as an own goal there. Um, we then played Fulham, who they always seem to have a good youth set up. Real good players. And this was a real high-scoring game. Away at Fulham, 5-4 we beat them. Again, Marshall got a couple, Kodua got a couple, and Lewis Orford got a goal. So, you know, amazing result, 5-4. You know, we've we've scored three, four, five. We can score goals at, at under-18 level. We then had a cup game against Fulham again, done them 4-2. 
Marshall with a hat trick again and Gideon Codra. This is what it is, you know. Once a player keeps just that's the thing, he's slight. It's just going up to that reserve team level. He might need to bulk up a bit. But at under 18 level against his own age group, he just can't stop scoring. He, you know, real good talent. Codra as well. I like the look of him. Our fourth game into the season. West Ham 6, Aston Villa 3. You know, we're scoring goals for fun. Um, Marshall's not in the team now. But then Lewis Orford gets a couple. And... Um, the goals were shared around a fair bit on this one. Caelan Casey scored a goal. Um, Billy Bates, uh, Blase Awanji and Gideon Codger again. 6-3. Uh, um, we then go last game of the season. Last game, not last game of the season. Last game that we've had and played. Um, at home against West Brom. West Ham 1, West Brom 0. So that leaves us 5 out of 5 in the league. Top of the league. Liam Jones scored that goal against West Brom, who I believe is Steve Jones' son, our former player. Um, and he's quite a young lad that's, I think, since Marshall's gone up to the reserves, Liam Jones has come up from the younger age group to, to fill that gap. So, just quickly recapping on the team. You've got, generally starting, Mason Terry in goal. Uh, we then have... Uh, Ollie Skiles at fullback or in midfield, Ryan Batram, uh, Asher Falas, and generally Kalen Casey is a uh, very highly rated centre half. Looks very big for his age, dominates in the air, nicks a fair few goals. We've then got midfield. I think this is probably our strongest part of the team. We then have Patrick Kelly, who's another young Irish lad that's come in. Patrick Kelly. Orford, George Earthy, these are real ball players and dominate the midfield at that level. And then we've generally had Gideon Codua, Callum Marshall, Liam Jones, and there's a young young lad called Rig who I need to do a bit of research on. I don't know too much about. But yeah, I think real exciting talent from what I can see in. Uh, you know, in both setups, even though the reserves aren't doing well in the league, you know, you've got young lads that are playing in that team. Uh, Regan Clayton, very highly rated. Then again, into the under 18, obviously, Freddie Potts, Ashby, George Earth is in both, Patrick Kelly, Lewis Orford, uh, midfielders, all midfielders there. Uh, Scars has travelled with the first team, Gideon Codra and Callum Marshall. So, you know, let's hope, fingers crossed, uh, the more we progress in the Cups and we can really see some of these players start to maybe get some minutes in the first team, which is the overall end game for both of these youth teams. So that's all from me. Um, I'm going to follow this up with probably another one just to recap uh, our young talent that's out on loan, how they've performed and uh, who's doing well, who might not be doing so well. And then keep you updated every week with the youth team results. <laughs>